Loudoun County parent Scott Smith recounted his family's pain and suffering after his daughter, he says, was sexually assaulted in a girl's bathroom by a boy who entered wearing a skirt. More shocking, Smith says the school board and the county's Soros-funded prosecutor tried to cover it all up. Of course, after hearing such disturbing allegations, we reached out to both offices. No word yet from Commonwealth Attorney Buddha Bibaraj. But the school board's response was truly despicable. First, they lied about it. Members were not aware of the specific details of this incident until it was reported in media outlets earlier this week. Then came the excuses. LCPS is prohibited from disciplining any student without following the Title IX grievance policies, which include investigating complaints of sexual harassment and sexual assault. They concluded by saying Scott Smith deserved to be arrested for trying to speak about his daughter. We were unable to locate any records that indicate that Scott Smith had registered in advance to speak at the June 22nd board meeting. So he didn't register. That's the reason. Joining me now are two Loudoun County parents who know the Smiths, Patty Menders and Aaron Dunbar. Ladies, thank you for uh, both of you for coming on tonight. Um, Patty, now you say the school board's claim that it didn't know about sexual assault allegations until this week is bogus. How do you know that? Why do you know that? So I've lived in Loudoun County for 23 years and I asked a former school board member. She said to us that the school board is very aware of any disciplinary actions, especially violent and sexual in nature. So the fact that the incident happened at the at the high school the principal was obviously alerted then they went to law enforcement it is automatically sent to the superintendent and the school board so the fact that they said that they did not know at the june 22nd meeting is wrong now aaron when i first heard that last night i i, I took my breath away i think if you don't know that a girl says she was raped we're not going to recount how it happened, it, what the actual descriptive content of that assault was, it was hideous. May may want to cry. If they didn't know about it, they all should tender the resignations. Frankly, they should all go. I agree. I agree. I mean, honestly, the the superintendent um, is kind of the last line of defense for our kids as far as the school disciplinary process. And the fact that he's just falling on the excuse that, you know, we didn't know until you all found out is just ridiculous. Now, Patty, last year, Democrats passed a bill that would end a requirement for Virginia schools to report all crimes on campus. And here's the bill's sponsor, Delegate Michael Mullen, on what crimes would be exempt. Which misdemeanors are no longer going to be required to be reported to law enforcement. It is sexual battery, stalking, um, violation of a protective order, and I can't recall the other two off the top of my head. Oh, how convenient, Patty. In other words, the very crimes that Loudoun County tried to cover up, they wouldn't have to report under this new uh, law. That's correct. House Bill 257 was created by a Democrat. It was passed and the governor, Northam, who is also a Democrat, he signed off on it. So I blame the Democrats for imposing this bill that prevents the superintendent and the principal from telling law enforcement. So look well, what happened to the poor Smith family. <clears throat> tell, tell us about tell us about that, um, Patty. What I mean, Mr. Smith came on last night, but he's obviously still, you don't blame him, incredibly emotional about this. And I, I, it's unimaginable. What, what have they gone through? So imagine your daughter being raped and sodomized in a school. You put your children on that bus and you hope and pray that they are safe. They're supposed to be safe in a school environment. And this boy, says that he's bisexual and wears a skirt, enters the girl's bathroom and does this to their daughter. Can you imagine the rage that any parent would have? And the school did not greet him very well and he was not allowed in. Then he attended the school board meeting and you can see how he was treated. It is a disgrace that this poor man and this poor family was treated like this. They went silent this summer 
And then they found out about this same predator went after and, and did the same exact acts to another girl at another high school. And they said enough being silent. And I actually had lunch with them on Monday. We set up a GoFundMe account for them. And the community is supporting this family because we blame the superintendent, the school board, and the Democrats in Richmond for allowing this bill to give all of this yeah, well, quiet hush hush cover up. Yeah, well, all, the, all, the, all the suburban women out there who, who you think I, I'll never vote Republican. You want to know why someone like Glenn Youngkin is a candidate you should look at, seriously look at in this gubernatorial race? Because girls are being threatened and hurt, and they're covering it up in these school systems. Aaron, some media are actually pushing this narrative that you, as a concerned parent, in general, concerned parents at school board meetings, are threats.